welcome back. Uh, we're back looking at our temperature conversion program, and we're looking at all the different kinds of things you can do in Java or any programming language. And one of the things that we want to do now is what happens when we want to repeat. All right, we've gotten input from the users. We've produced output. Um, we've even created a nice drop-down menu here. We have conditional execution so that if the user types one thing, we do one thing. If they type something else, we do something else. If there's a mistake, we have that covered. And then we show the results. We've got a lot going here. But one of the things is that there are times where you want to repeat instructions. Maybe you repeat until you get the right out or you get the right input from the user. So in other words, you're asking for their name or whatever and they put it in the wrong format. It's called validation. Um, another reason why you might want to repeat is that you just need to do something a set number of times. Um, you need to do some calculations that require uh, multiple iterations going through and doing it. Um, in this case, what we I uh, thought of doing is uh, setting it up so that the user can keep entering um, doing new conversions until they're done. And so one of the things I want to do is kind of look at the game and what or the game and look at the program and decide what are we already doing and where could we work in this loop. So let's just kind of review the actual dialogue. We've got our welcome message. We've asked for the name. Um, and then here we have a choose an option. Okay. So we already have it built in to choose Fahrenheit and Celsius. And we're thinking, if we're going to loop it again, when would be the time to loop? So at the beginning, we choose an option. Let's say we choose Fahrenheit to Celsius, and we put our temperature in. And you know we put a temperature at 10 degrees Fahrenheit or whatever, and we get um, what that is in Celsius. Um, and we get our output. OK, at this point, after that output, I think it would be a great thing is to ask the user if they want to do it again. So what we're going to do is, um, Let's set this up in such a way that um, a nice natural way of determining whether they are going to do another option or not. Um, what if we just give it as one of our user options? And so we put it right in here. One of the options is to quit. Okay. And so um, and so we do that as one of our options here. So if we're going to ask them that they want to quit the program, uh, how about we loop as long as they don't want to quit the program? So we want to do this as long as it doesn't end up being that they want to quit the program. The cool thing about this is this turns into what's called a sentinel controlled um, while loop. And in the sentinel controlled while loop, the, we're reading in input from the user. Okay. And so that's that we're reading it in by giving the options and then setting conversion type to a string uh, and checking to see did they choose Fahrenheit to Celsius, Celsius to Fahrenheit, and now check to see if they quit the program. So after we've put this input in, we can now loop as long as it's not the letter Q. Okay. And so we'll go ahead and set it up here. So we do a while. And in a while loop, you're, you're saying as long as is kind of what the while means. So as long as conversion type, and we're going to do the starts with again. In this case, if we put Q, we're saying while it, they're trying to quit, we don't want to. So we're trying to actually do the opposite. So while it's not, it doesn't start with quit, well, we have in our option in a while loop, just like we had in an if loop, we can do a lot of things here. Um, what we can do, for example, ways you can set up while loops. You could say while x here, hold on, it's not going to like it, but we say well x is less than 100, for example. We're going to loop until x becomes 100 or greater. Um, we use these comparison operators here, right? Well, one of the things that we're going to take advantage of is another operator, the not operator. Now, I said this in the last video, I believe. Well, let me get rid of that, that X. Is that this starts with is a Boolean method that is going to return a true or a false. And because it returns a true or a false, we can put it in if statements. We can also put it in while statements. 
So we're going to say while conversion type. Okay, so what we're going to say is since this is going to return a true if the user wanted to quit, we want the opposite. And for that, we put the exclamation mark. So we're saying while the conversion type does not start with Q. So it's actually the opposite of what we want to do. Okay, so as long as it's not starting with Q, we're going to basically loop. Put a space, do my opening curly bracket, press enter. So the question is, what do we want to loop? Whatever we put inside is what we want to loop. Well, guess what? That's all of this. Okay. So the first thing, now the first thing I just want to, as a general rule of thumb, if you're going to do a while loop, make sure you can get into it. So in this case, we get into it if they choose anything other than Q. Okay. So now we can go in, we can highlight all of this code all the way down to the else, which is here. Now we have this show the results, so actually we're going to want to show the results as well. So I'm actually going to go up to here and right click all that and I can cut it. Or, instead of doing it that way, I can highlight it all, click and drag. So I'll show you that. Click and drag. Of course we want to backspace that out. This needs to be tabbed over. So now all of this needs to be tabbed over. Tab. And so what we're trying to do here is let the curly brackets show us where are we in our code. So we have that while conversion type starts with Q, or it does not start with Q. We check to see, well, is it an F? If not, is it a C? If not, was it some other weird thing that happened? And we want to show the results. And the last thing we want to do is get out of our while loop. So in order to get out of the while loop, we're going to, guess what, have to repeat this all over again. However, guess what? We've already created our user options. So we actually don't need to do that again. We can now just go here and we, we're going to have to copy it this time. Okay. And we're going to paste it in here. So we're going to show the results. get input. Uh, and then let's go ahead and run it and see how this works. See if it, first of all, if it works correctly. Always, always, always test. So, do we have our options? We have an option to quit the program. Let's do Celsius to Fahrenheit, click OK. Good. Let's do 55 degrees Celsius. Ends up being 131 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to click OK. Now guess what? We can choose an option. And let's do quit the program. OK, we're done. So last thing we should do is thank the user. OK, so now I've added the J option pane show message dialog with a thanks for using the program. Let's test it out. And I think we're just about done. OK. And uh, we'll go ahead and choose that one. Fahrenheit, let's say, I know it got Whoa, that was too big of a number. That actually, okay. All right, wow, 122 degrees Fahrenheit is 50 degrees Celsius. Um, there's a cleanup we should do. And let's go ahead and quit the program. Click OK, and it says thanks for using our program. All right, so let me just do a couple cleanups, and that is in the output. And uh, where we build this... Um, All right, that'd be fair enough. So we add that little piece there. Degrees, degrees Celsius. And then um, we have on here, welcome, user with a nice message here. All right, well, we'll clean that up and then run it one last time. All right, I went in, I added my message. And uh, it's pretty much run. Uh, let's test it one last time, and then I'll just do a quick review of the code. All right, we have a problem with that because look at how wide that is. So let me cancel this, and let's cancel that and cancel and let it do that. That's okay, console. You can go away now. Um, let's just do new line returns. New line here. New line here at the end of paragraphs. And we'll put a new line here. 
run it, test it. This is why you want to test it. Uh, and of course, eh, there's probably a way we can set the width and do some other things. This is where you have a container you can set the width, and I can show that in a later tutorial. Um, anyways, you're going to want to clean that up at some point. You can figure that out. And let's go ahead and do one of each. 75 is okay. Let's do Celsius to Fahrenheit. And this time we'll do zero. It should be 32. Great. And then finally, let's go ahead and quit the program. Click OK. Thanks for using our program. And we're done. So let's take, take a look at the code. And let's look real carefully at what we just did. Um, we already got, we added to the user options, quit the program. We then show those options to the user and capture it with conversion types. So this becomes what's called the sentinel variable. And so this variable is what we're looking for in the while loop. And since starts with Q produces true or false, we want to get the negative of that. So it's the opposite. By putting this, we're saying basically while conversion type does not start with Q. And then um, everything inside of this curly bracket will be what's looped. And so it begins there. And if we scroll down, you will see, see how it's highlighted down here? That's where it ends. Anyway, so this if is inside the while loop. The else if is inside the while loop. The else is inside the while loop. We show the results in the while loop because every time we do a new temperature, we want to show it. We get the input at the very end, and then that sets us up to loop again. So if the second time around they choose an, uh, an option, either option, and they choose F, or C, you know, if it ends up being one of these, then we'll loop again. And we'll keep looping until it ends up starting with the letter Q, which is for quitting the program. And that is the point where we're done, in which case we go after all that and we thank the user. The other thing you should get in the habit of doing is looking at your curly brackets and counting them and making sure you're consistent with tabbing. Um, if you notice here, everything in this public class converter, in fact, this is the very first curly bracket, everything inside of that all the way down to here is tabbed over at least once. And this one here is closing the very public class converter. And this one right here, you can see, is holding the, the main method, which is all of that stuff. Notice everything in the main method is tabbed over two times. So we notice there's a tab, there's a tab. And then we have some indentation when we have instructions. Note the instruction line ends there. And then in our while loop, everything's indented. And inside the while loop, there's an if structure, and everything in there is indented. So if you have everything indented correctly, it makes it that much easier to know what you're closing. So if you have a curly bracket that's at the very left-hand side, it's probably closing. It should be the last one you see. The next one should be at least one tab over and one tab only, and so on and so forth. So hopefully that will help you out in your coding, and hopefully this will be good. Um, on the next round, uh, we've done the while loop. I want to show you the do while loop and save ourselves several lines of code. And then we need to find out what happens if they click the cancel button and basically crash the program in the middle of running. How do we deal with that? That's called exception handling, and we'll deal with that on a later video. I hope you enjoy this, and we'll see you around.